Hello everyone, David Giulio here with Ozone Engineering and in this video I show you how to use the Antis Maxwell Magnetic Transient Solver to model, design and analyze a DC-DC LLC resonant converter. Shown here is a PQ-5050 core and highlighted here are the primary turns of the primary winding and highlighted here are the turns of the secondary winding which is a split winding and highlighted here is the top half of this split secondary winding and highlighted here is the bottom half of this split secondary winding shown here is the maxwell circuit used to provide the excitation to this converter where two pulses are used in series where one pulse is positive the other pulse is negative and none of these pulses are active at the same time and there is a dead time between the pulses Shown here is the, res is the resonant capacitor computed using the excitation frequency and the leakage inductance of the primary winding where this leakage inductance can be computed using the sh short circuit test as I have demonstrated in my previous video showing how to compute inductances in transformers. On the secondary side we have the split transformer windings basically two windings in series with a ground connected in between them and we have the, the uh, rectifier diodes and output capacitor and the load right so this is the electrical representation of the FEA model right now I have used I mean I have used variables which I'm bringing up here variables for the excitation for the timing of the pulses so all, all of this has descriptions and I'll just go through real quick the the meaning of these variables and how I use them okay so I have the, re the resonant frequency versus the switching frequency okay so we provide a, a switching frequency to the pulse we may adjust that frequency um, to apply, to apply for the resonance capacitor, but in this case, it's both the same. Switching frequency equals the resonant frequency, okay? Input voltage is 432 volts. Output is 48 volts, and we, we could use a turn ratio to determine that, okay? Um, I have here, from the short circuit test, the leakage inductance of the primary is 29.5 microhenries. This is the formula to compute the resonant capacitor, right? Many of us are familiar with this formula. I'm not good. At, I will not go into it. But I'll, this converter is designed designed to deliver a thousand watts, one kilowatt. Now, <clears throat> the 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 we use I use a duty cycle shown here. And I specify the width of the pulse, shown here as dollar sign TW, where dollar sign represents um, a global variable. So whenever we use global, global variables, we use dollar sign. So TW rep represents the width of the pulse. TRF represents the time rise or time fall of the pulse, where I equal this to a time step. So it's one time step to rise, one time step to fall. There is a delay time, which I compute this formula here, which is the total period of the square wave, square wave voltage minus four time rises and falls minus two pulse width, right? Times all this by half. That's, I get the delay time. And I specify by how much to delay the first pulse and how much well, how much time to delay the second pulse, right? And I check, make sure that each time variable, right, the width, the delay, and the rise and fall time, all these time variables are a multiple of the time step. So I, I take these time width, time delay, time rise, fall times divided by the time step, make sure I get an integer. Because if not, then this means that these time variables are not a multiple of time step. That means then when the square wave voltage is you know running in the simulation the it will not perform as expected because it is not 
a multiple of the time step. So in other words, it will rise and fall at, at, at different times not designed for. So we want to make sure that this is checked, okay? So now we can we can use basically any duty cycle, but depending on the duty cycle we use, that will affect by how much we need to divide the, the period by, okay? So all this must be taken into account, okay? All right, so let's, let's go take a look at some results. So we have here current, which looks very sinusoidal. The peaks look sinusoidal, right? However, there is a slight current imbalance in the secondary windings, which I need to investigate and figure out why, but this is for another video. However, we see that the currents um, the peaks at that time is, ex is at, as expected. The curve in red is primary current. And let's take a look at the square wave voltage. So as I mentioned, I use two pulses in series. None of the pulses are active at the same time. One pulse is negative, other pulse is positive. And all of this produces, as I'm showing here, only one cycle, okay? so. Those, those positive and negative pulses in series, they produce this square wave voltage where I have avoided using switches, right, for, um, to develop the square wave voltage. I, you know, because for simplicity, you know, this works, right? So in another video, I will use switches. But for now, for simplicity, I just use this method. Um, what else? Let's take a look at here is a plot of the magnetic, magnetic flux density and magnetic field strength. Right, these are the highest values in this simulation. Now, this is a Ferrix cube core um, um, 3C97 material specification, where it says that, for example, so let, let's let's define this. So mu i is the initial permeability, mu A is the apparent permeability. And it says here that at 200 millitesla, permeability is about 5,000. Okay? So right here, when magnetic flux density is 200 millitesla, permeability is 5,000, that corresponds to H being around 32. But in my results, we see that B is 372, right? 0 0.372 Tesla. That's about here, this operating point. And H is 59, right? That's about here. So I'm, in my simulation, I'm operating around this point, right? for the maximum B and H. This is in the linear region, and I have chosen to use a, a simple linear material for this example. In a, in a future video, I will, I will do an example using nonlinear material, right? I will, I will use the BH loop. Here, let me show you some, some effects. Okay, so let me Hold on, let me hide this. I just want to show the, the core and the air gap. Okay, so let me turn this on. Now, let just real quick show you the, the fringing effects. So, inside the material, we can see the magnetic field lines are straight, but near the edges, <clears throat> like toward you know the inner part of this leg the the field lines tend to move outwards and this is using quarter symmetry okay so there's really i'm only showing one quarter of the model right there's really another half reflected on the z 
the x plane and a, and another half on the zy plane okay so this is the results i've shown you how to set this up i've shown you the windings i've shown you the electrical circuit right how to make the connections the electrical representation the fea physical representation we've seen some results and that is all for this video contact us to learn about our simulation capability and request a demonstration for us to show you how we can help you with your engineering projects ozone engineering inc is an ansys elite channel partner and we provide training to use ansys tools offer consulting services and sell ansys software packages thank you very much and take care.